Well, happy Easter and Resurrection Sunday. I trust today has been a very special day for you. We had a fabulous uh, resurrection service this morning at church. The choir was just fantastic. The, the music was great. The special singing was just over the top. The kids had a great time with their activities. We had a great brunch, just lots of good things. And uh, saw a lot of decisions, a lot of people responding to the message this morning as we finished, I finished the Easter series called Crossways. We talked about the criminals this morning. Well, another Easter celebration has come and gone. It's crazy, isn't it? It just seems like with every major holiday, there's just so much hype that is that is built up. And then once the, the event happens, it's like it's gone and we start preparing for something else. We've got to guard our hearts as Christians for that when it comes to Christmas and when it comes to Easter because we'll do the same thing. We spend all this time preparing for Easter, and if we're not careful, well, the Sunday morning Easter service is done, and we move on to the next thing. I don't know about you, but I don't want to move on from the influence and the effect of the Easter story and of the resurrection. And so with that thought given to you, I'm kind of given what I've done the past, kind of my theme the past couple of years, in the evening to do a thought called After Easter. And tonight's thought is seeing clearly as we attempt to not move on. Seeing clearly. You know, Easter's over, the resurrection's passed, and now we've, we've got some work to do. And with that said, after we celebrate the resurrection, uh, I hope you celebrate it in such a way that the resurrection has personally affected you. Um, hopefully you've experienced the resurrection by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. The wonderful story about Jesus is that we are all sinners. Sin demands a penalty. God demands a penalty, a payment for sin. And if we die in our sin, it's hell forever. But Jesus came, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on Calvary, like we've heard about again today, for our sin. When he cried out, it is finished, the payment of sin was done. It was paid in full. He wasn't crying out, I am finished. It is finished. Our sin debt has been paid. And if you'll put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be forgiven. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that just great? I hope you've trusted the Lord. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you put your faith and trust in Jesus as your Savior, you can, as the Bible says, be born again. We talked this morning about the criminals. There were three of them. Of course, Jesus was the man in the middle, and on one side he had a thief, and on the other side he had a thief, and one rejected him, one accepted him, but there was another criminal. His name was Barabbas. He was set free. We don't really hear anything from him again, and that would be the one that neglected. Boy, he was set free, and what did he do with that freedom? And I want to challenge you, don't neglect the opportunity right now to accept Jesus as your Savior. And if you are saved, don't neglect your responsibility to go tell others and serve the Lord with the life that you have. Life is short. You know, once the resurrection happened, there were so many unanswered questions. So many of Christ's followers, they had they they were confused in some areas. They 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 had unanswered questions that that was very important. The the one that came who died on the cross, they 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 were trying to figure out what all this meant. They thought he was going to come and restore Israel. Well, now he's going to resurrect. He's going to resurrect, and there is a brand new opportunity, and that is to know Jesus Christ and see the scriptures fulfilled. And may I just say this: the goal is in our Christian lives, once we've been saved, is to let God continually open our eyes. Matthew chapter number 20, verses 29 through 34, talk about these blind men. They come to Jesus and they're crying out, oh, son of David, I have mercy on us. And the, you know, the crowd, he stops in the middle of the crowd, calls these uh, men to him. And Jesus says, what would you that I should do unto you? And they said that we might receive our sight. And Jesus says, uh, he says this, he says, be it under your faith. Uh, he, he grants them their sight. And it's a wonderful thing. And the Bible says, after that particular incident, it says, it ends by saying, and they followed him. And uh, that's why God has given us spiritual sight, that we might follow him. 
Uh, we were never meant just to sit on the sidelines. God has a plan for your life. He's got a plan for my life. Now that Christ has been resurrected and these disciples had some questions, they needed their understanding opened. And that's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do in Luke chapter 24. If you're there, that's where I'm going to be reading Luke chapter number 24 and beginning in verse number 13. I want you to listen and listen close to this wonderful story. The Bible says, And behold, two of them went the same day into a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three furlongs. And they talked together of all the things that had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So they're dealing with all of these questions and they're trying to piece together everything. Now they've heard that he's raised from the dead. And Jesus comes along their side, joins them as they're walking, but they don't know it's Jesus yet. He's concealed himself. The Bible says, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And so Jesus is going to ask him a few questions. And he said to them, what manner of communication are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And they begin going over the events of the past few days. And Jesus continues to prod them a little bit. He says, what things? And, and they respond like, you have no idea what's been going on. Everybody's paying attention to this. This is, this is an incredible thing. And uh, they, they continue to tell Jesus that they had trusted that it had that he had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and the certain women also of our company made us astonished when, when they were early at the sepulcher and when they found not his body. So they're going to be then talking about the resurrection. And Jesus is going to go ahead and respond after all this. He's going to say, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. And listen to what the Bible says. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, speaking about Jesus, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And he's going to draw an eye to their destination. He's going to make it as, as if he'd go a little bit further. And they're going to constrain him to stay with him. He's, he's preaching the word of God. He's talking about Christ and the Messiah and the resurrection and the death on the cross and all these things based on Old Testament scriptures. They're going to go on and Jesus is going to disappear out of their sight. Listen to this. But they constrain him saying, abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were opened. Now I'm almost done, but don't miss this. They're going to, he's going to disappear out of their sight and they are going to have a conversation about this. Did not our hearts burn when he talked to us? They're going to go straightway, join themselves to the disciples, and all of a sudden, Jesus is going to reappear in the midst. It's going to validate everything that they were saying. This is after the resurrection. And I'll tell you this, listen. The Bible says their eyes were open. What opened their eyes? It was the truth from the scripture. I hope you know Jesus Christ is your savior. But if you're going to have God open your eyes so you can see more clearly to follow him now that Easter's over, then you're going to have to have a steady diet in the word of God. I close with this. When they got done and Jesus appeared, the Bible says that he's going to go ahead and ascend. And it came to pass while he blessed them, this is during the ascension, he parted from them, carried up into heaven, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Listen closely. The results were they got in the word of God, their eyes were opened, and they continued to worship God and continue to follow the Lord day in and day out. What did they do after Easter? They served the Lord. What should we do after Easter? Let's serve the Lord. Let's serve the Lord by following him. How do we follow him more clearly? These two blind men that got their sight restored to them, their sight was restored to them so they could follow clearly. If you've been saved, you know the Lord. Get the word of God. Let God open your eyes so that you can faithfully follow the Lord all the days of your life. After Easter, seeing clearly. God bless you. Happy Easter.